Dispenser going up. I'm the Uncle Dangalab. I love maps. And this video game is a true treasure trove. After the classes, the maps make TF2 what it is. Without a map, you wouldn't have anything to play on. So yeah, maps are kind of a big deal. But how big? How big exactly are these maps? Like how much space do you have to play on each map compared to one another? Well, I think it's an interesting question, especially since people seem to attach the word big or small to maps just based on what they assume. But in the past, I don't think anyone has actually gone in and measured the actual size of the maps relative to each other. So that's what I set out to do. I wanted to see if it was possible to measure the actual size of every map in TF2 and compare them to each other. I wanted stats to tell me how big the average King of the Hill map is compared to the average attack defend map, I wanted to know what's the smallest map, what's the biggest map, which maps are less spacious than they might appear, things like that. But keep in mind, I'm not interested in finding out the size of an entire map. Maps in TF2 are very different from one another in the way that they're constructed, not only in terms of the layout, but how they're decorated, how much inaccessible space is used for backgrounds, basically things that don't affect the gameplay at all. What I was most interested in obtaining was the size in any relative unit of the accessible, playable space in which players are intended to walk around of every official core map. This essentially means that I wanted to find a reliable, preferably fast, way of measuring something similar to the square footage of the 2D plane for every map and compare what I would call their actual sizes side by side. So how would someone go about doing this? I obviously can't just get the data I'm looking for by only comparing the file size of the maps themselves. I'm looking for something much more specific than that. Because I have basically no experience with how maps are even created, the first person I turned to for advice was UEAK Crash, a senior staff member on TF2Maps.net and the creator of a multitude of maps such as Probed and Moonshine, Crash immediately mentioned something very helpful to me, which was that something called the Navigation Mesh would be a great way to harness the area in which players are intended to be able to access. A Nav Mesh, in simple terms, is basically a thin layer of boxes that are positioned just on top of the floor of a map, which is used by bots for their pathfinding calculations. This information is stored in a nav file that you can generate by using the command nav underscore generate, which stores the file in the maps folder on your PC. So right away, this seemed very promising. I figured I would be able to load up a map, make a nav file, and compare the size of those files in bytes to determine the size of the playable space relative to each other. Most maps nav files seem to be pretty understandable. Frontier is around 1,500 kilobytes. Badwater is around 1,000. Upward is almost 10,000. Wait, uh -huh. that can't be right. I'm no scientist, but upward is definitely not 10 times larger and playable surface area than Badwater is. Almost right away, I had run into an obvious snag. Turns out, the nav mesh can be on just about any piece of ground, even places that are completely out of bounds with a kill box above it. Upward in particular has such a large nav file because the death pits all over the map are still completely walkable, if you can somehow survive the torment of standing inside of a kill box, of course. And who knows how many instances of this setup are found on other maps, so right away, comparing the size of the nav files was not going to be a reliable method of measuring the size of walkable areas because some walkable areas that are technically walkable are not actually walkable. So I started to ask around, going deeper into the mapping community, asking people if they had thought my experiment was even possible. At some point, I found myself in the chat room of one of Freya's mapping streams, and a mapper named 14-Bit mentioned and demonstrated to me that you can use a command to basically link the individual navigation mesh tiles to each other based on what is intended by the developers to be accessible. This method, which I'll just refer to as a nav flood, turned out to be exactly exactly what I was looking for. 14-bit even provided me with a manual method in which I could determine the size of all of the linked nav mesh tiles in hammer units, which is the universal unit of measurement in source games. I've basically been handed a way to do exactly what I wanted to do, but I was still not ready to start measuring. I took the concept of the nav flood process to my good friend and extremely competent TF2 coder, Pazer, and asked him if there would be an easier way to obtain the size of the nav mesh than the manual method that 14-bit had proposed. He said that 
that he could cook something up using a modified version of his Spectator plugin that he's developed called Casting Essentials, and within an hour, he'd given me directions on how to use his plugin to automatically determine the playable space of a map in kilo hammer units squared. So, for the next hour or so, I measured. I loaded up every single official core map in the game and determined the size of the playable area. After I'd completed my research before I went to bed that evening, I messaged the developer of Teamwork.tf, a website that researches and maintains a library of statistics across all walks of TF2 life. In fact, if you're as intrigued about TF2 stats as I am, I highly recommend checking them out. I asked Teamwork.tf if they could take the data I provided and organize it into an easy to read set of graphs, and the next morning, I had woken up to this, a comprehensive display of every core map in TF2, listed by their actual size. So now that you know the story of how I obtained this data, let's just jump in and take a look at what we got here. Overall, the average size of a TF2 map from the casual core map section is around 18 kilo hammer units squared. The average size of a TF2 map that is played in both official competitive mode and third party competitive is slightly smaller at 17.25. You can also convert the KHU squared units into real life measurements if you were curious about how big a TF2 map would typically be in real life, but I'm not gonna do that for every map. But let's just take a closer look at the size of the maps compared to ones within their own category of game modes, starting with the attack defend maps only, we can already find our smallest core map in the entire game, Junction, which is a tiny 7.4 KHU squared, more than twice as small as the average TF2 map. The biggest attack defend map is Egypt at 25.6, which is to be expected since it's a three stage map, and by that logic you'd expect Decibel to be next, but instead it's actually Mercenary Park at number two with an area of 22.4, which is kind of surprising. Next is Dustbowl of course, but at a measly 20.3, it's only slightly larger than your average map. It's statistics like this that remind me that just because a map is long doesn't mean it's actually big. Dustbowl's tight corridors are what actually make it a much smaller map. Compare that to the wide open, often vertical stretches of land that you typically find on Egypt. Moving on to the capture the flag maps, I will admit that I was honestly expecting something different, but it turns out that your typical CTF map is pretty tiny, with landfall being the biggest one at 13.6 KHU squared. But wait, with the recent Blue Moon update adding the old maps of CTF Sawmill and CTF Well back into the casual core map rotation, Landfall has been absolutely blown out of the water by both of these maps, with Well becoming the biggest CTF map at 23. On to the next game mode, Control Point, which we seem to have an abundance of at first glance, but keep in mind that Control Point comes in all different shapes and sizes, in particular, Powerhouse is the predictable winner of the smallest Control Point map award at 14 KHU squared, but well, 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 looks like we found our biggest map so far with, not well, but the recently re-added 5 Gorge at 32 kilo hammer units squared. To be fair, 5 Gorge isn't so much a big map as it is just thick, and I don't mean like thick like how I'm thick, I mean like there's just a lot of wide open, useless space going on on 5 Gorge, which makes it even bigger than CP Well, another massive control point map. But other than 5 Gorge and Well, the sizes of most 5 CP maps seem to be pretty consistent, sitting in the 17 to 22 range. Well, let's move on to the King of the Hill maps, which I think everyone can assume are the smallest type types of maps in the game, and you'd be right, they're all pretty much about as big as a CTF map, there's just a lot more of them. The biggest one being Sawmill at 14.9, which personally I didn't expect, but I can understand just based on the huge open areas outside of spawn. The next one down is Suijin, which I personally was expecting to be massive because you can pretty much stand on every roof and there's an entire area to the side of the point that no one ever really goes over to, but still contributes to the girth of this map. And I was honestly expecting Harvest to be the smallest Koth map, but I was stunned to learn that Viaduct is actually a bit smaller at 9.3 compared to Harvest at 10.7. I suppose since Harvest is technically flat all over and Viaduct is sectioned off by buildings and barriers, this comparison does make sense. It ends up being a great demonstration of the power of walls and how they often end up making areas seem much bigger than they actually are. And then the last set of maps sorted by game mode are the payload maps. Right away you can see that as big maps go, there are none that even come close to the massive size size of enclosure. For a map that apparently houses giant dinosaurs, I suppose they certainly got the scale right, but damn dude, this map is far and away the biggest map in the game at over 48 KHU squared. Obviously you'd assume the three stage payload maps are bound to be the largest because it's essentially three smaller maps in one, but even if you were to make just the last stage of enclosure its own map, it would still be bigger than Dust Bowl in terms of playable surface area. Even Thunder Mountain, a three stage payload map with a ton of open space, while 
pretty darn big at 38.4 is still second to Enclosure by a lot. As far as the three stage payload maps go, actually, it seems that Enclosure and Thunder Mountain are the only two out of four that are considered to be supersized. The other two, Gold Rush and Hoodoo, are actually pretty average in size compared to the rest of payload maps at 25 and 21 respectively. Once again, you can blame their long track but small surface area on the abundance of corridors and tunnels, as well as the fact that maps like Gold Rush and Hoodoo make economic use of spawn rooms by combining them with the next stages, while maps like Thunder Mountain and Enclosure have each of the stages completely separate from each other. I found it interesting that Frontier was around the same size as the smaller payload maps like Badwater and Upward, since I had always assumed that Frontier was a pretty large map, and I was also caught off guard by how comparatively tiny Barn Blitz is when put up alongside its peers at a pitiful 14.8. But at the end of the day, it's the most interesting to me how similar in size a lot of the maps from different game modes are, something you'd never be able to accurately guess based on just playing them alone. For instance, Sawmill and Barn Blitz are pretty much the exact same size, Badwater and Upward are slightly smaller than a lot of 5CP maps like Badlands and Snakewater, and you can fit the smallest map, Junction, into the biggest map, Enclosure, six and a half times over. I decided to only include the core maps in this data because those are the maps people typically like to play, but I'll throw up on screen a few measurements that I took later on for the more popular alternative game modes, just in case anyone is curious. Overall, this little project came from my personal peaking curiosity on the subject, and I didn't have any intent of making a video about it when I first started looking into it, but after gathering and inspecting the data, I thought it was intriguing enough to let you guys in on my nerdy experiment. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope it was interesting to hear about my little experiment. But before you go, make sure to check out all my other stuff. I have a Twitter, I have a Twitch channel, I have a Discord, I have a Patreon, I have a big old page full of merchandise, dude. Get your, get yourself an Uncle Dane shirt for Pete's sake. I'm going to be adding a lot more designs to the shop over time, so keep a lookout for that. I'll definitely keep you guys in the loop about that, though. And support my sponsor, Marketplace.tf. They sell pretty much any item for cheaper than the Steam Marketplace or better. Look at my shop. I'm selling this unusual taunt for 15% off. Isn't that crazy? And if you want to buy some keys, just make sure you use the code UNCLE at checkout when you buy 10 of them to get another key for free. It's a pretty good deal. All right, roll the outro. Yeah.